Did you know that you have trillions upon trillions of tiny little staplers that are producing ATP energy for all of the cells of your body? Me neither, until I learned this. This is Organized Biology, and today we're going to talk about how we actually produce ATP in our cells. So first off, the way we do this is we have to take a phosphate all alone, and we have to staple it to an ADP molecule. Now, if you watched my video in the past about what ATP is, when we use ATP, we actually form adenosine diphosphate, meaning two phosphates, and a blank phosphate, otherwise known as an inorganic phosphate by itself. So to make ATP, we just have to take these two guys and put them back together. So the goal is to staple this phosphate right there to make the ATP molecule. Now, that takes a requirement of energy. And how we do that is we actually use these little stapler guys to actually staple the phosphate onto the ADP molecule. So the question is, my friends, what the heck is this stapler, you may ask? Well, this stapler is called ATP synthase. This means a couple things. It's dealing with ATP, Synth means to put together, uh -huh -huh. so to put together ATP, and ACE means enzyme. If you don't know what enzymes are, they're little proteins inside of your cells that are making chemical reactions happen because this is a chemical reaction. We're putting a phosphate on an ADP. So this stapler is called ATP synthase. Well, where do you think this stapler resides? You're probably right if you answer the mitochondria, right? So this is the mitochondria, a little organelle inside your cells, and it is called the powerhouse of the cell. Why is it called the powerhouse of the, hell of the cell? <laughs> Why is it called the powerhouse of the cell? Because it makes ATP molecules. We need to get more specific, though. This ATP synthase, the stapler, is actually going to reside in what's called the inner membrane of the mitochondria. You see, this mitochondria has two membranes. It's got an outer membrane in blue, and it's got an inner membrane in red. And the space inside is actually called the matrix. So we are going to look inside that inner membrane and see what's going on so that we can actually run this stapler so we can make ATP. So let's get started. I'm going to draw this diagram here in about one second. Ready, set, go. And voila. Oh, shoot. Uh, wrong diagram. But while you're here, you might as well click the subscribe button. It only takes about 27 of your ATP. Now let's try this again. Voila. Wow, that was really, I did a great job. Sweet. Okay, so let's set up the scene here. We need to make ATP with ATP synthase. ATP synthase is found right here in the inner membrane of the mitochondria, right? And this is a stapler, but we need to power the stapler in order to put that phosphate, staple it onto the ADP to make ATP. Well, how do we power the stapler that is ATP synthase? We need to feed it some hydrogen ions, and we'll get to hydrogen ions here in a second. Okay, so we've got this guy over here, but we also have this separate protein group of five that are saying, give us electrons, give us electrons. So we've got two really needy proteins right now. We've got these needy proteins, also called the electron transport chain, ETC, you may have heard of this before, and ATP synthase, both needing either an electron or a hydrogen ion. I have a perfect solution for them. So this is what we're gonna do. We're going to give it a hydrogen atom because a hydrogen atom is made of a proton, which if it's by itself, is actually a hydrogen ion. But hydrogen atoms also have an electron, which is negatively charged. So here's the thing. Within a hydrogen atom, we have both the needs of these protein groups. We have the hydrogen ion and we have the electron. We just need to separate them out. And we'll get to that in a second. So where do we get these hydrogen atoms? Well, we get them from two main molecules. NADH, that's going to be holding onto a hydrogen atom, and then FADH2. So we actually have two hydrogen ions on this guy. So these are carriers of these hydrogen atoms. These were produced in the previous step called the citric acid cycle, otherwise known as the Krebs cycle, which we'll talk about in this video here if I am done with it at this point. So we have these molecules that are holding onto these hydrogen ions and they're actually going, or hydrogen atoms, they're going to release them into this solution here. So now we've got some hydrogen atoms hanging out in the solution. Well, 
This is in the matrix, right? So this is in the center of the mitochondria, all right? We need to give the electron to these guys, and we need to get the hydrogen ions up here. So they decide to work together. Check this out. So the electron in this hydrogen ion atom will go and go through this process called the electron transport chain, getting thrown through, thrown through, thrown through. And we're going to see what happens here in a second with that electron. In the process, this guy, this hydrogen atom, is now that proton. It's just that proton by itself. That hydrogen ion actually gets sucked up by the electron transport chain. So as the electron's flowing through, we're actually pumping hydrogen ions up into this space. So not only does the electron transport chain get what it wants in the electron, but it actually sucks up these hydrogen ions that are made, and it's going to pump them into this middle space. Wonderful. So now what we've created here, guys, is what's called a concentration gradient, where we have a lot, a lot, a lot of hydrogen ions that are floating around in this space here between the outer and inner membranes. And we know that in nature, things like to flow from high to low, right? So since we have this high amount of hydrogen here and a relatively low amount here, what we can do is actually just by nature, flow these hydrogen ions from high to low through this ATP synthase. And in the process, we're going to power the ATP synthase. So once it gets fed those hydrogen ions, it's going to activate. We're going to start stapling now. So once it activates, the phosphate will get stapled on and boom, we have an ATP molecule. And that is how ATP synthase works, right? But there's another thing we need to consider, right? We have this electron that's by itself, right? Well, interestingly, this electron can get picked up by an electron acceptor. That electron acceptor is the air that we breathe in. That is oxygen. So we'll actually have an oxygen atom pick up that electron as well as two hydrogen ions. So when two electrons come in here, with two hydrogen ions and an oxygen atom, guess what they make? Water. So this is how we actually produce water in this whole process, okay? Is oxygen grabs those electrons with some hydrogen ions, forms water, and we also form ATP from the process, which was the goal in the first place. So this is how we staple phosphates onto ADP to make ATP in the electron transport chain. So we began with the end in mind. This is actually the last step, okay? But if you go back one step, we can actually talk about the citric acid cycle in another video, which comes right before this in order to produce these molecules here, which were imperative for this to work. So this has been Organized Biology. If this has been helpful at all, please like and subscribe. I appreciate it. It'll give you a lot of energy if you, you know, just tap that red button right below this video. Thanks again and take care. Did you know that, <coughs> let's try this again. Do you wanna learn how to make ATP in this video? Shoot. I believe that ATP is made when ATP synthase is powered by the concentration gradient of hydrogen ions flowing down their concentration gradient to create massive amounts of ATP. How did you learn that?